Welcome to Around the ACL. It's Michelle Thompson here with Trey Ryder and Anthony Ione. And we have a lot of important things to talk about today, uh, especially about the draft, the teams, all that fun stuff coming up in just a couple of weeks. So got to get into that a little bit deeper. We also had some more uh, qualifiers uh, happening, so some new pros that were named. And we have uh, Buy or Sell and Trey's Name That Player game, which Anthony and I did pretty good last week. I don't think we embarrassed ourselves too bad. Yeah, not bad. You guys are on fire. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't, I don't know if I'd say all that, but we'll take it. Uh, but, uh, Anthony, I think I saw that you had some cornhole going on this weekend. Oh, my gosh. The first cornhole since March. Wow. Since March. Yeah, uh, I'd only, it was crazy. I'd only played one actual game of cornhole since March and it was at Worlds and I was walking by Team Burn and it was like Hadley and Zaft and Lopez and they're like, we need one more for, uh, you know, for some doubles. And I'm like, guys, you don't want me to, play. you do not want me to play. I don't play anymore. And they're like, yeah, we're just having fun. So I played uh, one game with those guys to 21 and that is it. I haven't played an actual uh, game except for actually when we go to Florida, we played outdoors. That's right. At that house, a few games. Yes. That's yeah. true. That's true. They were the, the beverages were flowing in that one. Yeah. <laughs> Even got Bernie yeah. throwing on that one. Yes, that's true. Yeah. So it's a good time. Uh, me and uncle Bob, we, uh, we rally all the men in our family together once a year. Uh, it started out as a, as a camping trip, like, 10, 12 years ago, and we called it, well, it was like man camp. And then it, and then it morphed to mamping. And then, mm -hmm. and then we were like, you know what, we're getting old and kind of, uh, you know, uh, you know, we got a little bit more money to spend. Let, let's go get a nice house. <clears throat> so now we've kind of upgraded to, you know, these, these pretty nice houses out in the Rocky mountains. So once a year we pile all the men in the family, anyone from 15 up, and it's just a good time to, to build, you know, some relationships as guys and men in the family and, um, and just absolutely love it. Yeah. So we, 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 uh, we played a, a little tournament on, on Saturday. It was a good time. So it's funny how different like men and women treat, like my friends, my girlfriends and I, like we do spa days and like wine tasting and like low key. It's just a very different experience. <laughs> oh, we were, yeah, different. We, we were hitting the cooler as hard as we could. Didn't sleep much, you know, a lot yeah. of bullshit and, and, and just getting crazy as guys. So we're all resting and relaxing. Yeah, we are not rested. <laughs> we came home to rest. Yeah, it was, yeah. it was not resting. <laughs> and dudes go places. They have zero plans. They will figure oh, it yeah. out when they get there. And it's like, ah, uh, well, I guess we'll eat at some point. Like, I guess somebody's <laughs> going to get some food, but. Uh, my friend no has fun. like menus planned. I mean, it's like, it's my friend booked a limo for us to go to the winery one time. I mean, like way over planning. I had to go. I'm, I'm a best man in a wedding. I had to go to, I had to, I, I planned a bachelor party and literally the, the conversations that are being had of, of don't plan too much. <laughs> just, just literally like section off like one Thing to do per day and that's just a general area of the city to go to and then we'll figure it out from there that's like <laughs> that's how dudes plan trips pretty much pretty much and i don't know what's better i'm not gonna i, I will say they both sound <laughs> fun but i know what i prefer <laughs> so there's that all right let's get into it we have the team's format uh changed a little bit this season uh trade's gonna hit on some of those points and then we're gonna get into the rosters that we have with the returning captains and then they have their five keepers so trey give us all the deets yeah so i thought the team's uh team's format went pretty well last year so um moving into this year there's not much there's not a ton that's changed, just a few different things. I think the, the biggest one is going to be how standings are kept. So last year, everything was done in the scope of a match, right? In one match, you'll play seven games. And whether you win four, five, six, or seven of those, if you win more than four, four or more, you're getting a one in the win column. And individual games were tracked. But in reality, they were mostly just used for tiebreakers. There wasn't a whole lot riding on each individual game. That this season is going away. The team's format is being, is being changed so that everything is determined based on game record. So at the end of the season, it's not going to be your final record isn't going to be 10 and 5. It's likely going to be something on the lines of 72 and 35, right? It's some combination of 
uh, wins and losses by each individual game. Very similar to baseball, there will still be individual game series. There'll be, you know, if uh, the Red Sox play the Yankees, they may play a three-game series over a weekend, and that's really just to make sure you're playing against the same team three times in a row to have a little series. And yes, if the Red Sox take two out of the three, that's great. But overall, it doesn't contribute uh, anything different than those two individual game wins. There's no more match record until we get to the playoffs. And in the playoffs is where that best of seven series format comes back into play um, in order to showcase, um, you know, the best, you know, to see who is the best in, in a series format. So only in the playoffs. So that's one small change. The other is last season we started with one captain and two co-captains. Um this year, we're just going with a one single captain, but that one single captain must keep five players from last year's roster and carry them over to this season. So that's six total players per team that will be the same as last season. The remaining 10 spots that are available for the draft will all be drafted. So anybody that wasn't kept and isn't a captain Gets put and all the rookies get put into a draftable pool that they'll be drafted um, on October seventh. That's on sad next Saturday, not this coming Saturday, but the Saturday after at six thirty p.m. on ACL Cornhole TV. The teams will go through and and draft their brand new teams. So that's mostly what's uh, that, that's the same. Um, one added cool thing is is beginning with open number five. Uh, every team at two different opens will have the opportunity to put up um, between three and four teams to play individual games, right? So the idea of playing, you're almost playing a mini series. You're not expecting that whole team to travel, but you are kind of playing a mini series of games that will contribute towards the record. This gives it kind of a hometown feel. The home teams will be playing in their local markets for the opens and in addition to that, it also gives a year-round vibe to teams so people can continually be cheering for, for their players. So um, that's overall the differences in teams. I think it's going to just continue to add a little bit of intensity and excitement to the overall team's format. And uh, kind of interesting to see which players got kept and, and which ones didn't. What about managers? Yeah, team managers this year will take on a similar, hopefully more, a little bit more hands-on role. This year, instead of just giving it to a director um, that's in that area, we're really working with the captains of the teams so that they can select a manager that they can really work well with and also incentivize that manager to win and, win and lose just like the team, expecting that manager to take a more active role in in lineup selection and a variety of different things. So um, there's more details to come out on that, on managers and things of that nature, but they will, there will still be team managers on the team. Yes. You got questions, Anthony? Yeah. Back to how the, uh, the record would be determined at the end of the season to determine who goes into the playoffs. So you said, uh, so last year we did, like you said, a series. So essentially you were a 15, match record or game record. So, you know, eight and seven, 15 and oh, whatever your record. So you're saying this season we're going off of games. So if there are seven games per matchup, it's it's a record of 105, you know, so then your, your record's going to be decided off of that. I think it's 15 times seven. How does that, you mentioned the mini team series in the opens. How does that fit into the best of 105? Yeah, so the idea is, so we take that 105 and then we add some additional games. Oh, so, okay. So you, 105 total games. And then on top of that, at two different opens, each team will play at two different opens. It may not be the same. Not everybody's playing at five and six. Someone play it, may play at nine and may play at okay. 13, right? And so at those individual opens, they'll play anywhere from three to four games. So that's another six to eight total games contributing towards the overall record that you'll see. So anywhere from... 111 to 113 okay. total games across the regular season. Okay. And it's probably best to select. I mean, you're, you're going to get most of your team there when it's kind of regionally close to those players. So, and if a team is region regionally heavy, you know, we don't know, maybe they'll kind of be spread. And I think one change this year uh, is we're trying to make it a little bit more regional with the elite drafts, right? Isn't there 
um, only drafts from that state or that states related to that team? Yeah, good call. So, uh, so we've already, we briefly, we have not briefly, we've extensively talked about the elite a few weeks ago and what that new format is, is like, here's, what's really cool. Every pro this year will be drafted. So that means we have 250 players. That means most teams, uh, specifically 12 out of the 16, will have a full 16 player roster coming out of the draft. And then the other six will simply just have a, um, a 15 player roster, right? So the idea is um, all pros will be on a roster. They can be dropped afterwards if they need to be. But the idea is players can be called up from the elite level to play on the pro team. Now, the way that works is the roster limit and the cap is set at 18. So you can only have maximum of 18 players per roster. And again, just like last year, if they're on their team, if they're on your team, they get a cut of the prize money. So that's something else to keep in mind as you're looking for roster size. Now, only elite players can only be added to the team that corresponds to a state where a pro team is located or an affiliate state. So for example, if I live in the state of Florida and I'm an elite player, then I can be called up to the Florida freeze. I cannot be traded. I cannot be picked up by a different team. I can only be picked up by the Florida freeze and at the pro events, if I'm on the roster, then I can be put in starting lineups and compete just like other pro players can be. So again, the elite players can play. They can't exceed the roster limit and they can only play for the regionally affiliated States. And um, the website has a list of affiliate States. So if you're saying I'm in North Dakota, North Dakota, I don't have a team. There, every single state has a corresponding uh, pro team that is affiliated with it. And so you know as an elite player which one of those uh, teams that you can be called up to in that case. Yeah, that's a significant change because not all pros made a team last year because we were <clears> – <throat> the pros in the PDC were open at the draft. So that is significant. One other thing worth, worth mentioning, you talked about elites – um, can be released, but have to be brought back to that corresponding team. <clears throat> I think it's captains cannot be released or, or, or Correct. traded. And the first two draft picks cannot be released or traded, right? Yeah. First, yeah. The first two, um, barring approval. So nobody is completely off limits. This is very much a, we don't want, and not that we're expecting this, but you just want to prevent a situation where there's a really off-balance trade that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. You want to make sure there's some level of parity in there. So the commissioner's office, if you will, gets final say on a trade. And by all means, if there's a fair trade that comes through and the commissioner's office approves it, they can be traded, but it, it it's not as seamless as any other type of trade. What about under 18 players? Yeah, all under 18 players that are pros can now compete for teams. They, can, they can be traded. Um, they can be added. They can be all those different things. The only restriction is uh, teams can only have one U18 elite player on their roster. So the idea is they can't drop multiple pros and end up adding enough elite players so that they actually outnumber the team. Not That's not allowed. So only one U18 elite player per team. That doesn't mean one U18 per team. It just means one elite U18 per team. Right. So yeah, they could theoretically can... have five under 18 pros, but just once he gets right. elite, then it's one. Yes. Uh, we should probably mention, I don't think it was mentioned. If it is, I apologize, but 10 round limited. Yes. Just like right. last year. Yeah. Okay, 10 round limited. And then in the draft, uh, we talk about the first round a little bit similar to last year where we took the ranking of the three captains and seated everybody that way. This year, we take the collective ranking of the six players on those teams, and that decides your first round draft, worst to best. And yeah. then the second round goes to the team rankings, worst to best, and then we go into a snake from there. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And it sounds it sounds it is a little bit confusing. We understand that, but at the same time, trying to figure out the best way to create some parity, right? So the reason the first round is different than the rest because 
some captains, based on who was on their roster and how their team finished and everything, might be starting at a little bit of a disadvantage. So the idea is round one, let's try to correct that as best we can. So with the first overall pick, the Cutters had the worst collective roster returning based on ranking. They get the first overall pick. They get that first overall pick. That kind of helps them get back towards a norm. The last pick in the draft in the first round, the Florida Freeze, right? They got a loaded roster coming back. Giving them that last pick in the first round is meant to kind of give a little bit of a correction. Then from there, we simply proceed into a snake draft. Just like your fantasy team, a snake draft is meant to be very to have parity. It's meant to give everybody as best as they can an equal draft from top to bottom. So the first round does that correction. And then two through 10 is your standard fantasy football snake draft with the first overall pick going to the worst record from last season, or sorry, the first pick in the second round going to the worst record from last season, who was the Kentucky Colonels all the way down to last the Pennsylvania ringers who will go back to back last of second round, first of third round because they won the pro teams championship. Yeah. So for those trying to follow this in detail, basically all 16 captains had to look at their team and go, I can only keep five, including myself making six. No, in addition, in addition to myself, in addition, sorry. Yeah. In addition to myself. So I have six total players so I can keep five plus I'm automatically on the team. So I, right. You start with six, not seven. So I can only keep those six. I have to release the other 10 into the draft pool for for anybody to draft. So all teams are starting off with that core six that were essentially selected by each captain. Yeah, exa- exactly correct. So there is certainly some some strategy involved. And we even look at some of the some of the rosters here. And I think there's some some interesting uh, yes. decisions that were made for sure. Definitely. Yeah. So do you want to go into that? Uh, now, Trey, and then we'll uh, hit news around the league after, like just kind of roll into just because we're already kind of talking about the draft order and that kind of thing. So let's just kind of roll into it, uh, talking about some of the teams who's been kept and all of that good stuff. Yeah, yeah. I think it might, might make sense that we can just kind of go through um, like the like the, the draft order. So we can go one through 16 and just kind of hit some some high points here. So uh, we'll start with the Virginia Cutters. They're number one because they are bringing back um, the lowest ranked roster out of everybody. Now, they do have some good players on here that were they return. So if we look at who's returning, we have Justin Stranger as the captain. He returns as the captain from the last year. And then our five keepers are Ryan Wiedenfeld, Logan Chamberlain, Leston Allen, Dakota Salee, and Michael Dingus. So collectively, um, their highest ranked player is Logan Chamberlain. After that, it's Ryan Wiedenfeld at 80. So they have one player in the top 79 rankings, and that's most of the reason that they're so far down this list. So, um, yeah, the Virginia Cutters coming in at, at number one, Anthony. Could that be strategic to move yourself up to get a solid draft pick? That's one thing that as we see through some of these, there were some question marks and I don't know how much was thought through it or, or anything like that, but there were some where I was like, I'm kind of surprised they didn't keep so-and-so. Um, right. So I think it'd be interesting to, to see how that goes. Um, next up, we have the Georgia Slider second. So Noah Wooten is your captain of this team. He is returning. He kept Cameron Belvin, Shocker, Ryan Smith, Bobby Hunt, Terry Mathis, and Duncan Clemmer. Now, the interesting thing that here, I think I know you're a numbers guy too, Anthony. They kept 163rd ranked Bobby Hunt on the roster. Um, Obviously, the highest ranked player that they kept was Terry Mathis at 27. Wow. Uh, Ryan Smith was 60. Duncan Clemmer, 82. Noah Wooten, 128. Three guys you'd expect to be a lot higher that ended up not so high. See here. Next up, we have the Aviators. So the Aviators are captained by Noah Almanza. So Noah Almanza, he was 160th. <laughs> so the captain yeah, was 100. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we'll ignore I think that right now. I think I think they're in a good position, right? Because they got bumped down a little bit. 
Uh, they get a higher graph, draft grade because Almanza finished so poorly, but they're keeping Trey Birchfield, Fisher Hamilton, Matt Abernathy, which I did find interesting, who was a cap, a co-captain last year, Tyler Car- Cobb, and then Carson Getty. Remember, Carson Getty went from on a different team at the end of the draft last year right. to now being a keeper for this year. But I think obviously that the no brainer was keeping Fisher Hamilton and Matt Abernathy did play pretty well in teams last year. All right. On to the coasters. So um, the coasters, they kept Eric Davis. Oh, they're captained by Jamie Graham. Uh, they kept Eric Davis, Berkeley pair, Chad hunt, Derek King and Trevor Brooks. Now one, If people start crunching the numbers, one asterisk is there two keepers were not able to finish a season for whatever reason. So their ranking was close to 275. So in order to prevent skewing of that data, um, if someone couldn't finish the season, they were giving a standard ranking of a hundred. So that's how it, it allocates in the rankings there. So yeah, Jamie Graham, Trevor Brooks, Eric Davis, Berkeley pair, Chad Hunt, and Derek King, I think a really sneaky good lineup, especially being all the way at pick number four, a a team that could that that could do some damage and a team that already made the playoffs last year with some good talent like that. Yeah, which means they let go, if I remember correctly, uh, a James Baldwin, uh, someone like a a Mike Harvey or of Dave Moore's. Those were kind of their top guys that they let go. Yep, yep. They let them said, see you later, those guys. Uh, (laughs) Next up. (laughs) Uh, we have the Woodchucks. They get the fifth pick. They're captained by Jimmy Humans again. He keeps Jacob Truszynski, Storm Hogue, Kyle Malone, Zach Scheibner, and Michael Lucas Jr. So no brainer on Truszynski, Malone, and Scheibner. He elects to keep Lucas Jr., which I don't necessarily hate. Maybe a little bit of friendly love or expecting his buddy to get a little bit better this coming season. Keeping Storm Hogue ranked 180 or was this intentional keep of Hogue that high to inflate that draft stock to give him the fifth fifth pick it might be one of those strategies you were talking about Anthony and that coincidentally was his picks in order so he kept his second through you know sixth whatever that was in the draft in order very interesting all right then we go on to a team the first team that switched their captains Funny enough, Josh Holland was offered offered to be the captain again. He said no. So the option went to Yeti Irwan. She was a co-captain. She becomes um, the full captain here. And the first female captain since Cheyenne Bubenheim in that kind of beta season of, or that, that, that pilot season of teams a couple of years ago where they weren't regionally affiliated, Cheyenne was a captain. Then Yeti becomes the second female. She keeps... Frank Maudlin, Adam Hisner, Justin Doss, Eric Anderson, and Josh Holland. So, oh, wait, nothing, what? Yeah, nothing, nothing. I would say four out of those five do not surprise me. But the fact that she kept Justin Doss over Vincent Fritz yes. was a very interesting selection what? there by, uh, by, by Yeti Irwan. I mean, I, I didn't even hear like a Schlobaum or an Anderson before Justin Doss. Who, who was, can you go through one more time? There's one I'm missing here. Frank Modlin, Adam Hisner, Justin Doss, Eric Anderson, and Josh Holland. Okay, so Eric she, Anderson. So she did get Eric Anderson, but no okay. Vincent Frisch, no Austin Schlobaum returning yeah. to the team. Again, it, before, we, before we say yes or no about Doss, obviously Frisch is – Performed better this past season than Doss, but was getting Doss at 150 an opportunity to move up in the order? Because based on these rankings, Anthony, they likely would have ended up in 12 or 13 had they gone okay. with a higher ranked player. So maybe there was some strategy involved with going with with number six. Although I don't know, did was Frisch even ranked high enough last year by the? Did he make all of the events to get a full? ranking so i don't know i don't know it's I'm, I'm i'm not sure i don't care uh you don't need a ranking from vincent frisch to know how good he is uh, but i do like it the strategy if they were to sacrifice a frisch to possibly come in and get someone like a caden allen or you know someone who might fall to you know sixth seventh in the draft that could be smart 
Next up at seven, we have the Kentucky Colonels. This is uh, captained again by Matt Guy. Um, so he keeps Brett Guy, shocker. Then he also <laughs> keeps Damon Dennis and then does keep Sam Finley, Justin Rule, and Kimberly Glass. So he keeps two females on the team, and uh, they end up kind of with a, a mid-round pick there, mid-range pick. No surprise in Guy and Dennis. And, you know, Finley, Rule, and Glass were all solid players and teams last year. Hey, by the way, looked up Vincent Frisch. He did, yeah, he definitely didn't play enough to get a high ranking. He ranked 245. Yeah. Means nothing. Yeah. No, but yeah, I mean, so. in terms of the the ratio of rankings, that might is my point. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah. So. All right. Then we move on to the high rollers. They are captained by Tanner Halbert again. Halbert is going to keep Hunter Thorne. He's going to keep Cody Henderson, Eric Zockline, Alan Rawls, and Kobe Costanza. Now this is a really exciting team because if I looked at them on paper or not paper, if I just thought about what I think their rankings would be, I would think they'd be almost be pick 14, 15, or 16. But Eric Zockline being 135 and Kobe Costanza being 145 yeah. really pushed them down a good bit. They kept number 11 in Hunter Thorne, number 26 in Cody Henderson, and number 9, Alan Rawls. Pretty good skeleton foundation for the Las Vegas High Rollers which also coincidentally is their one through six in the draft, their top six. Next up here, we go to the pick number nine. We're going in the second half. We have the Texas Bully Baggers. Eddie Grindersleeve is the returning captain. He stays as captain. He is keeping Caleb Batson, AJ Sims, Dylan Turpin, Cameron Kingfisher, and Deb Odom. The first three there were no-brainers. I thought it was interesting that he kept Kingfisher. Kingfisher was one of those ones that didn't finish the season, so his ranking gets substituted with a 100. So I did think it was in interesting that Kingfisher got kept. And I love Deb, but this felt like a, like a team mom keep right here or – some offer kind of like an olive branch or something to Deb to, to and and did so maybe to inflate a ranking a little bit. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, love the first couple picks. The other ones eh, might be good or bad. Arizona burn up next. They made it all the way to the team championship final. Here is another captain change. So you guys know how well they all work together. Uh, the Arizona burn, I went to Doug Zaft. I said, you want to be the captain again? He came back and said, Ty earned it. We've already talked. He's going to take the reins. I'm still heavily involved. So they have this thing down to a T. Lopez and Zaft are back. They lose Bill Hadley to retirement, so they could not keep him. But then they're going to keep Derek Holland, Jeff Reynolds, Moses Sasueta, and then Florentino Mendoza. Whoa, that's going down. Interesting to get Mendoza, but if we remember how good Mendoza was in teams, I think it doesn't surprise me too much. Maybe the only surprise, surprising there is they took Mendoza over a Steve Schrader. So yep. I thought that was somewhat a little bit of an interesting dynamic there. And a Brandon Ooh. Jones. Uh, yeah, probably those two questionable. Yeah. Next up, we have the Michigan Marauders. They're pick 11. Joe Niestet returns as the captain. No change there. He keeps Jordan Power. No surprise. Remember, loses Jay Rubin to retirement. Yikes. That's a big blow to that team. They keep Jordan Power, Mike Ferreira, Jeremy Shermerhorn, Chucky Love, and Trevor Kufis. Now, keep in mind, Chucky Love was on the brink of not even getting back into the division. They keep that they keep him at 149. And then of course Trevor Kufis at 42, who had a really sneaky good year last year. So um kind of middle of the road team here for the for the Marauders. Next up, we have the Slingers. So the Slingers are captained by Tony Smith. So he's number one. <laughs> he get he keeps. 
Corey Gilbert, Nick Williams, Peter Sesweta, Travis Purser, and Alec Ryan. All things considered, I didn't really see any surprises there, right? He probably would have wanted some high, more higher-ranked players, but the team play, played well. They pretty much kept their best players on there. Obviously, if you could keep seven or eight, you take a couple more, like maybe McClem or Streaker or even Gonzalez, but uh, pretty solid keep there, I think, from Tony Smith. And those are their one through six coming into the season, letting go of like a Rosie Streaker, a Zachary Ingleton, Jay Corley, Ricky Gonzalez, letting go of players like that. We move on to the Chicago Land Spinners. Mark Richards is returning as the captain. He's ranked number four. He's going to keep Nico Morellas, Tyler Poitras, Timmy Jonas, Jordan Kimbrell, and Philip Lopez Jr. A team I would have been ecstatic about going into 2020, going into 2023, going into 2024. Kind of almost feels more like a team that's got some stuff to prove. So. Um, I don't even know what to think about the spinners. I kind of like it. I kind of don't like it. I'm kind of, it's kind of a toss up of how, how good they can really be. Yeah. Losing Jimmy McGuffin, uh, and, and then Felis Vargas, who I thought had, uh, you know, a, a pretty decent season, maybe possibly worthy of, of staying in above Kimbrel Jonas, maybe. Next up, we have the Missouri maze at pick 14. Ryan Windsor is staying as the captain He's keeping Isidro Herrera, Steven Bernasset, Gavin Cano, Ethan Walker, and Jalen Jones. Loaded team, in my opinion, who they got to keep. Um, you know, Jones may be the only one you think about looking at somebody else on your team, but Windsor, Herrera, Bernasset, Cano, and Walker, you're going to be hard-pressed to find a, lot, a, a, a lineup that, that starts that good when you talk about a team That formation. is tough. I love that. Moving over into the Pennsylvania Ringers, there are champions, reigning champion, and this is another one that's pretty loaded. Harbaugh returns. He's the captain. He's going to keep Justin Burton Jr., Matthew Creek Killer, Gage Landis, Tubby Cobb, and Trey Hunt. He did choose to keep Jacob Foreman. Jacob Foreman, news or not news to everybody, is stepping away for some family health issues. So in his replacement, he gets Trey Hunt, who is actually higher ranked than Foreman last year, funny enough. Yeah. Uh, not by much, but by a little bit. So again, feels like a team that is absolutely loaded because you get to return two squads that played together all year. Tubby Cobb and Trey Hunt played together all year. And then um, Harbaugh and Burton Jr. played together all year. So, I mean, it's already starting off with success. And then finally, your best on paper returning team, the Florida Freeze. Alex Rawls is your captain. They do not have a player ranked worse than 62. <laughs> okay. So they bring back Alex Rawls, Cheyenne Bubenheim, Ryan Hart, Chris Kingsbury, Jeremy Frazier, and Blaine Rozier. Absolutely loaded lineup. We talked about the Virginia Cutters on the far end. They had one player inside the top 79. The Freeze have one play, no players outside 62. Absolutely loaded. Loaded, loaded, loaded. So uh, I think it's going to be an, inter an interesting one. Um, and uh, uh, Michelle, how much time we got here? We got, no, we're out of time. We got to move yeah, on. Yeah, I was say, I don't, I don't know if you wanted to quickly just, I mean, you kind of uh, touched upon how the second round is going to go. So that's going to be based on their ranking last season, correct? Yeah, yeah. So it'll go top to bottom. I mean, we'll hit the second through 10 draft order. We'll snake. So it'll be kernels, sliders, cutters. Marauders, spinners, uh, woodchucks, high rollers, timber, ba bully baggers, coasters, slingers, freeze, maze, aviators, burn, ringers, and then the same thing reversed. And it keeps reversing back and forth. So maybe maybe we'll talk about um, draft picks and targets next week, Michelle, on, on, on next Monday's show. Yeah, I think that sounds perfect. That way we can get into – the uh, news around the league, we had a couple, like I said, local qualifiers happen, uh, one over here in the West, so congratulations to Nate Long. And then in the Great Lakes, we had Nick Mezcal and uh, 
I was watching the uh, social media and it seems everyone's really excited about that in the area. So congrats to both of those guys. Yeah, Mescal, he's got a fan base uh, in, in the Great Lakes. So they were really, really excited for him, him to get that win. Yeah, and also in those fields, you had a Donald Cup out there in the field. He took third overall. Uh, Gorski was out there. He went three and one in rounders. Uh, I think he took like third or fourth. Um, Austin Renard trying to get that card back, went three and one in rounders and then lost his first round match to Michael Harris um, in that one there. And then on the west side, Mark Lopez making it to the final, trying to get that pro card coming up a little bit short. I think that's back to back for Nate Long, if I remember correctly. It is. I, okay, yeah. it is. Yeah. Um, you had a Spencer Fabinar, who I believe won an advanced singles bracket at Worlds. If not, he was right there. Uh, so I would I would have thought he would have been up there. He took fifth overall. So there's just some other people in the field. To compete. Yeah, definitely over here in the West, we thought Spencer or Mark would have been the ones to take that um, just based on some of the chatter. Uh, I was actually at a tournament in Los Angeles and they had the qualifier up on the TV. So we were all watching it. Um, so it was pretty cool to be the part of that crew uh, back in my hometown, Canoga Park, where I grew up. <laughs> So good stuff. All right, getting into buy or sell, let's go through some. Uh, I'll read a line and you let me know if you're going to buy or sell. And Anthony, those are the options. Yes, <laughs> that's it. I got it. I got it. Caden Allen is the first rookie drafted. Buy or sell? Uh, yeah, I think the key is the first rookie uh, drafted. Uh, what did I say? Oh, yeah. Who did you take? Well, so you're talking about the the first rookie drafted, so it might not be to the cutters. It's just the first rookie to go off the roster. Well, yeah, right, because uh, I'll, I'll tease it. I tweeted it. Um, I had Jake Gore going first because right. Jake Gore wasn't eligible to be drafted last year. So I do have Caden Allen going number two to the sliders. I think he's too high of a value to give up. Jake Gore was a top 10 player in the world for most of the year. If I have an opportunity as the cutters to take a – a tried and true already new, like has been there, done that guy in the top 10. Like to me, it's dumb if you don't take Jake Gore first. So that means the best player available is Caden Allen. He's a rookie. I'll buy. He's the first one off the board. Anthony. Yeah. I'm actually going to buy as well. Cause what are we talking about? We got Caden Allen, a Jeremiah Ellis, a Sammy Soto, maybe throw in like a, like a Braden Wilson, but I agree. I, I like Caden Allen as the first rookie. I have him going fourth overall in the draft. More than half of the first round is U18 players drafted. This one's interesting. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine. I have nine, so I'm going to buy it that more than half of the first round are under 18 U18 players. Anthony. That's that's half because they're they're really good, and half because the ones that were in the pro division last year that are returning weren't eligible, so they're also thrown into that field. So it's a combination right. of both. Right, Anthony. Yeah, I have a ton as well. I think I'm right on the half mark, and it's because we have a couple 18-year-olds, so I don't think that – we're saying under 18 or 18 and yes, under? Yes, under 18. Okay, so I am literally 8-8, eight and eight, Mish. Um, <laughs> wow, shocking. So, <laughs> so I'd have to sell if I'm going on that. We're going to – but if you count the two 18-year-olds, uh, that makes 10 for me at 18 okay. and under. It's going to be a lot of young young players going going early in the draft. The Freeze have the best building blocks for a returning team. Uh, yeah, I, I, for the most part, I, I want to agree with it. If I'm if I'm trying to find a reason not to, I really like the building blocks for the Ringers. Shocking. Um, so maybe that's the reason I'll sell, right? I still think individual talent-wise, collectively, the Freeze probably have the best lineup returning, but I get a championship mentality a championship captain that knows how to coach a team to, to win it all. I get two of those teams returning off of the championship right out of the gate. They got the experience. So yeah, I'll go ringers having the best building blocks going forward. So I'll sell it. Anthony. Uh, I'm going to sell as well, but I'm going to throw in the maze in that discussion too. That, that looks yeah. brutal. Windsor Herrera, Burnus at Kano Walker. I mean, that is insane. I think Ethan Walker is going to level up this year. So 
I'm going to sell as well because you do have a couple couple teams going against that. Okay. There will be a pre-draft trade. You know, I'm going to buy it. I think last year a lot of teams were scared of trading. They were, yep. they were still trying to figure it out, right? I think now there's at least – I know there's some conversations being had behind the scenes because now this is something that they haven't been able to do before, right? The idea of let me trade – my draft spot for this player, right? Or something along those lines. That's something that hasn't been able to be done before, right? Um, so I think it would be interesting to see if we see any of these teams trading. I think we get at least one pre-draft trade. I'll buy it. Anthony? Yeah, Jimmy Humans is in the mix. Anything is possible. Um, and I... <laughs> I think I think that the, the captains and teams kind of learned a little something from last year, and maybe they'll be a little bit more strategic. Uh, so I'm going to buy. A female gets drafted in the first round. Yeah, there's a couple on my list that came close, and I did have one in my first round. I will buy it and say it would be Bella Soprenant late, late in the first round. She has the talent, right? But I know some people may be worried about kind of how she wasn't able to attend some of the events at the end of last season. That may scare some people away. She is one. She's like she's like the 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 draft pick that comes in in the NFL that like you weren't sure personality wise if they're gonna mesh. So they drop maybe they drop out of that first round, but they're a first round talent grade. That's how I look at Bella Soprenant. But I'll go on a flyer and say yes, she is. Buy it, Anthony. Yeah, our best shots. You named Bella. Uh, also, I think a Rosie Streaker in the mix of that possible discussion. If we learned anything from last year, I, I felt like that the female players were a little undervalued. There was a lot of times we were talking in the draft. They should have been going and stalled multiple rounds. So just based on what we saw last year and looking at those two players and the rest, I'm actually going to sell that we do not get a, a female. In the first round. Okay. It's time for Name That Player. Trey is going to try to stump Anthony and I with some player information. Take it Never. away. I don't try to I don't try to stump you guys. What do you, what do you mean? That's I'm not like, the goal. Oh, my bad. <laughs> All right. So this one has a theme that I thought was very interesting because I didn't really like anticipate it. Um, but the theme is none of these players were kept by their captain. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So there was a conscious decision and, and so we'll start with there. Okay. So this first player um, has won one doubles open, one doubles shootout, and two nationals in doubles. Wait, he won two nationals doubles? Oh my gosh, who wouldn't keep that person on their team? Okay. Well, you said they won the the shootout, the two nationals. What was the first one you said? Open? They won, they've won a doubles open. They've okay. won a doubles shootout. And they've won two doubles nationals. Okay. 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 This player has th obviously Jay Rubin's off the table. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Jay Rubin is off the table. This person is the highest title winner that is not currently on a roster. The highest titled winner not currently on a roster won a lot of double stuff. Uh, yeah. well, what about, let me go old school. What about, um, what about Jordan Camba? It's not Jordan Camba. Yeah, he didn't win it this person sure. has a world championship. Oh, Did Damon Dennis, is he on the team? Yes. Oh, I got one. Nah, cause I don't know about, I was going to say James Baldwin. James Baldwin. It James is. James Baldwin. Oh, he won. A I didn't shootout. tell you that he also has a singles world championship. That he's also got some other single stuff. But I wanted to reiterate: this guy's won a lot of stuff in doubles, wow. and he's not. He was not kept. He had a bad season last season. I get it, but when that guy gets on the broadcast court, he does something different. Interesting. I think he's going to be a great pick. I don't think he'll go in the first round, but a team that ends up drafting James Baldwin, I think, is going to get some potential really good value there. Value counter. There's one. Mm -hmm. All right. All you counter. 
All right, next up, um, this person has one doubles open title. Again, not on a team. Okay. One national title in singles. Oh, that list should be small. (laughs) (laughs) And... Two national titles in doubles. Jordan Camba? Yeah, I don't think he got a singles. By Misha's face, I can tell when I read out these accolades and this person isn't on a team, her mind is blown that this person wasn't kept on a team. Yeah, it's crazy. This person is under 25 years old. The players kept on this team over this person include Alec Ryan, Peter Sasueta, and Ta- Travis Purser. So he was uh, so a slinger. It was, yeah, as Ricky G or God, who was the other one that you just said? And, no, but Zach Engelkin wasn't. He's no, it can't be him. God, who else is on that team? Oh, it's a female. It is not. Oh. <laughs> that, would, that would have been either Rosie or, or Allison. Those, those were the two women. All right. This person won their doubles with the same partner whose name is Kyle Malone. <laughs> uh, Cody Dalton, Johnson. No. Dalton McClellan. Sorry, sorry. Uh, Dalton Mc- oh, yeah, Dalton McClellan, yeah. Dalton, Dalton McClellan has four titles, was not kept by the he won a singles national? Was it juniors? No, he won it when we when he didn't have pro singles, it was just advanced singles. He won the first oh, national man. of the year. 20 wow. that was the 2019 uh, advanced singles uh national. Okay, the last one is high I'll big it really quick. Highest titled female not on a roster. Rosie Streaker. Rosie Streaker. Nope. Some nope. Uh, Connie Altice. The reason she's not on a roster probably because her captain is now her ex boyfriend. Wait. Oh, Kaylee Hunter. Kaylee Hunter. Oh. Is not on a roster. It's like who broke up. <laughs> wow, Kaylee Hunter out there. All right. Yeah, yeah. I um, thought it was very interesting that she wasn't on there. So I, I do as well. All right, time for hot takes. What you got, Trey? Uh hot takes. Look, um, my my sports teams aren't doing that well. So my New England Woodchucks gonna <laughs> make it to the pro team's final this year. Jimmy Humans is going to put a master class of a draft together. <laughs> Jacob Trzinski is going to be the MVP of the team. Woodchucks in the pro team's final. Anthony? Oh, that is hot. <laughs> 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 oh, my gosh. All right, just to kind of put this in perspective, there are twice as many returning pros as rookies in the draft. Ish. A hundred... Plus or minus a few returning and 50 plus or minus a few rookies. So even with that two to one out number, we're going to have more rookies drafted in the first round than returning pros. Oh, I I don't think that's necessarily hot. Two to one on the odds. You have to think there's, there's a hundred people in the pool who are returning and only 50 rookies. So to have, what would that be? Almost 10 out of 50. So almost 20% of the rookies pulled in the first round would be pretty crazy. Okay, okay. Um, I'm going to go like Trey. I'm going to go with my Cali Slingers. We got close. We're going to make it to the finals this time. Let's go Slingers. Slingers versus Woodchucks. Boom. Slingers, Woodchucks. We we, we nailed it. (laughs) Forget the ringers, the freeze, (laughs) the maze. Yeah, they don't have a chance. (laughs) All right, that's all we got time for. We'll see you guys all next time.